text this morning is taken from Psalms 107 verse 20. Psalms 107 verse 20. And I think it's and yeah, and it's on, it's on the screen. Very good. And so the psalm of David says he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Now, last week, the pastor said that last sermon, last week's sermon was the last sermon in the Grace to Heal series. But today is the last sermon in that series. Yeah, so we're still talking about healing. And so our memory text rescued from the trap. And so, Psalms 107 through 150 are books of thanksgiving and hallelujahs. David is singing God's praises for not only the things that God has done for him, but he's thanking God for the things that he has gone through because David realizes that the things that he has gone through has made him a better Christian, a better man of God. So sometimes, saints, when we go through these adversities, and yes, they hurt, but there's the greater good because it allows us to grow in God. And so David realizes that, and there has never been a time, even whatever David has gone through, there had never been a time that David did not stop and praise the Lord with thanksgiving and hallelujah. And so if we're honest this morning, as we look over our lives, saints, we must confess that God has never left us alone during our troubles. And to be honest, sometimes it feels like he's left us. But God has promised in his word that he would never leave us nor forsake us. So it doesn't matter what we go through on this earth. It doesn't matter the problems and the anxieties and all of that stuff. Troubles in the marriage, troubles on the job, all of that stuff. God has promised that he would never leave us nor forsake us. So no matter what happens in our lives, we like David must praise God with thanksgiving and hallelujah. It is in the rough times that we should experience the, the presence of God the most. It all depends on how much time you spend in the word and how you develop that relationship with God. If you don't spend any time with him, and then you won't have much of a relationship. And so when those trials come, and they will come, it's hard for us to stand the test of time. It's about relationships, y'all. Uh, and it's through David's experience uh, in his deliverance that he writes these psalms. These psalms of praise and hallelujah, God has never failed to deliver David out of his trouble. And, and he will never fail to deliver you out of your troubles. When the world, when your world is in shambles and you feel alone, that's when God is the closest. And I want to press the point that there is never a time in our lives that God is not near to us. No matter how it feels, it may feel that we are alone on this island of Patmos, but God is always there. Listen to this quote that I got from, that I, I found from Sister White. She says, talking about Paul now, um, she says on the, talking, I'm sorry, talking about John, on the lonely Isle, she's talking about Patmos. He, John, received more communications from heaven than he had received during his lifetime. And can you imagine that? On the lonely Isle of Patmos, he received more communications from God 
than he did his entire lifetime. And see, so the point I'm pushing here is that sometimes we need to get alone in a solitary place in order to hear the voice of God. Sometimes life is crazy. And it drowns out the voice of God. But we need to get into the solitary place, folk, and like every day. And we can experience the voice of God. And so it, is in, it, was in, it was in John's solitude on this lonely island of Patmos that we have the re revelation of Jesus Christ. God poured into John the history of this world. What's going to happen next in the book of Revelation? Because of John was on this island. This island of Patmos, God poured into him. And so sometimes, in order for us to experience uh, that closeness with God, that intimate relationship with God, we have to get alone on our island of Patmos and let God pour into us. And so I want to go over this morning, and I won't keep you long. Um, we're going to just, we're going to kind of dissect this short a uh, passage of scripture. And so the Bible says, David says, that God sent his word. And so in the, we're going to stop at sent. So in the Hebrew, Hebrew word, sent is pronounced shalak. Uh, and there's many forms to this word sent or shalak. But so sent means sent. We all know what sent means. If you send somebody we, we know what sent means, so I won't, I won't take time in, the, in that. But here's something that I found in, 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 uh, in Strong's exposition of the Bible. It says that this word, shalak, he uses this a form, and I, and I particularly like this form. He said that this, Strong says that this word sent is symbolic of a missile. And so this is what I take from that, that God's word, now we know what a missile is, and a missile is always fast, and it's usually accurate. You can kind of almost depend on it once you fire a missile, it's going to hit its target. And so here's the takeaway from that. God has sent his word, the Bible, like a missile to your soul. So no matter what we go through in this life, like a missile, the word is God is there to sustain you and to deliver you out of your troubles. Shalak. And the next word that we want to focus on is his word. His word. And in the, in the Hebrew form of that, uh, the word is pronounced dabar. Dabar. And this word, Debar, lets us know and it reveals God's thoughts and his will. God loves us so much that he wants us to know what he is thinking about us at all times and why he's thinking it and what he wants us to do with our lives. Debar is the word. And so I want to talk to, to the folk on this side of the church. And I don't want you to tell these folk over here. This is, this is, this is a secret between us. God has even gone so far that he lets us know that even though things can be a mess down here, that there's rescue and redemption is coming. Once we read the bar or his word, deliverance is in his word. Solitude in his word. Yeah, yeah. Comfort in the written word of God. Yeah. The bar. Yeah. And so the Bible, um, Ellen White says that the Bible is the only rule of faith and doctrine that there is nothing more calculated to energize the mind and strengthens the, ele and, and strengthens the intelligence than the study of the word of God. It's the study in the word of God. Your power is the study in the word of God. The bar. That's where the power is. That's why David was able to write the things that he, he did uh, in, this, in uh, 107 through 150. The book of Psalms is broken down into five songs. This is the last song. 
And so this is why David was able to write these last five songs of praise and hallelujah because he had experienced this intimate relationship uh, with God through things against the other party. They'll stand before the camera. Found a, a study from the Pew Research Center. And this was very interesting to me. And because I could not understand how somebody who say they are a Christian could live that lifestyle totally opposite. And then they'll interview some, some, some other folk who say they're Christians. And these aren't politicians. They're just regular Christians. And they say some of the craziest, strangest things. And it makes me wonder where in the world did they get that? Well, part of us is reading the Bible once a week. And here's, here's, and here's something even worse. 45% of Christians, now these ain't, folk, these are Christians, Bible-baptized Christians, evangelicals, who's supposed to be the cream of the crop of Christianity, right? Evangelicals, 45% say they read the Bible seldom or never. Seldom or never, 45% of Christians. And so it's no wonder that we hear all these crazy and vile things coming from these folk who said that they are Christians. The reason is nobody is spending word, spending time in the word of God. There's so much power in the word of God, the bar. But we're not studying it. And those who are studying are only doing it once a week. This folk has got to be a daily study of God's word. If you want that intimate relationship with him, if you want to overcome these things of this life, we've got to spend time in the word of God. So I ask you the question this morning, is anybody worried and anxious this morning? The solution is in the word. Are you sad and depressed? And life seems that don't make sense? Study the word. Because that's where your healing comes from. David was clear on that. Now, I've got to tell you folk over here, and don't tell the folk over here. It's a secret. And so there's another aspect to this word, debar, or word. And it's found in John, I'm going to ask if you put that on the screen. It's found in John chapter 1, verse 1 through 3, and then verse 14. And here's what the Bible says. And you all know what it says. So read with me. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same, <laughs> wait, wait y'all, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. We've got to get this because I, I, I want all of us to, to, to read this. The same was in the beginning with God. So where are we now? We're verse, we're verse 2. Verse 3. Come on, verse 3. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Verse 14. And the word was made flesh, and what? And dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And so this other aspect, y'all, of the bar is let us know that the word of God, the bar, has a name. Oh, I'm talking to this folk over here. It has a name. And as we just read our scripture, this the bar means it's, the word is Jesus Christ. And so we've got a two-pronged um, weapons in our arsenal. We've got the written word, and then we got Jesus Christ, who is the word of flesh. Yeah. He came among us. He dwelled among us. Jesus Christ did. And so God has given us these two sources of power. All we have to do is, is avail ourselves of the power. The power is there. God has done his part. And so everything else, it is incumbent upon us. Now, I'm having a problem, y'all. I don't know. It's, it's the, 
it's the lighting up here, but I'm having a hard time seeing my notes. I don't know if. That's, that's kind of worse, y'all. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I guess you can lower them. I guess it's just, yeah. Because I want to read you this part. Because this, 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 next, this next thing just ministered to my soul. We, we, we're talking about Jesus Christ. He has come in the flesh, y'all. And he has come, he can deliver us from all our troubles. And so, the quote is, this is, this is, this is taken from the pen of inspiration again. She says, come and cast your burdens of sin and guilt just where Jesus wants you to place it, at the foot of the cross. There you can be free. The sin bearer, talking about Jesus, has taken your burdens. And then she says, when Satan tries to fasten the burdens on you again, take your Bible and read, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but what? Have everlasting life. And so God has given us Two forms of weapon in our arsenal, the written word and the word of Jesus Christ. God sent his word so that we can receive healing. And so that's the next word we're going to talk about uh, in our verse, uh, verse 20 of uh, 107, uh, verse 20. And it is God has sent his word to heal them. Amen. Now, this Hebrew word heal of course, uh, it's Rafa, Rafa, and this, and this, and it's, and it's, and it's, and it lets us know that this word Rafa is 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 a restoring to normalcy. So I asked a question this morning: Are you sick and need healing? Appear appear to God, because that's where the healing is in the Word of God, or the Word of flesh, Jesus Christ. That's where the healing is. Um, um, Jeremiah 17, 14 says, heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. Just that simple. This is Jeremiah. Now, Ezekiel 47, 8 says, uh, God tells Ezekiel that he would heal. Now, get this. God tells Ezekiel that he would heal contaminated water. Contaminated water. God promised Ezekiel that he would heal this contaminated river and that everybody, all the cattle, whoever came to drink from this river will receive healing. God healed a river. And so Matthew 10, 26 through 31, and we all know it, that God, Jesus speaking, saying that God cares about the birds of the air, the sparrow. So when a sparrow falls, God notices it. And then it goes on to say that he even noticed when one of the hairs on our head falls out. God noticed that. And so the question I'm going to ask you this morning, that if God cares about a bird, and if God cares about one string of hair that falls from your head, what do you think he cares about your broken heart? Yeah, come on, for what do you think he cares about your broken heart? Of course God cares. He's concerned about every aspect of your life. Here's another quote. Jesus, talking about this is from um, uh, Acts of the Apostle. Jesus blessed them. He spoke words of hope. Talking about Jesus' ministry now. I'm talking about the bar, Jesus in uh, the word made flesh when he walked this earth. And let me tell you, folks, we are told that even though Jesus is not walking the earth with us today, we got access to that same power. Yes, he cares about the things that we go through on this world, in this world. He cares. And he's waiting to heal us if we ask him. 
And so she says that Jesus blessed and spoke words of hope and comfort. And this is a word for us too. Uh, because sometimes, I have to admit, sometimes as Christians, we can be heartless and cold. And there's a lot of folk who's walking around who are hurting. All of us hurt from time to time. And so we have to be more compassionate towards one another, speaking words of comfort to one another. And so she says that Jesus blessed and spoke words of hope and comfort uh, with unfailing tenderness and gentleness. He met every form of human woe and affliction. That's Jesus the word. Now, is there any sick among us this morning? Is there anybody who's worn and torn by the battles of this life? This life is a cruel life, y'all. You know, we living in a hostile world. But is anybody worn and depressed this morning? Anxious. Just sit and just ready to give up? Is there anybody who is bitter and have anger issues this morning? There's healing from Jehovah Rapha. There's healing in the word. All we need to do is access the word. The word is here. Jesus is here. The only thing we need to do is take access to the word. He's just waiting to heal broken hearts and broken things. But I like the way this translation in the New England um, translation uh, says, this t says this verse. It says that, that uh, after he sent his word, that he rescued them from the pit where they were trapped. That's what the New England translation say, that he rescued them from the pit where they was trapped. Anybody feeling trapped this morning? Trapped in the wilderness of despair and loneliness? Jehovah would break your chains. Trapped in darkness? Are you trapped in a storm? God sent his word to rescue you from the trap. What about the wilderness of oppression and depression? The wilderness of affliction, the wilderness of sorrow. Is anybody in danger this afternoon that God promised that he would rescue you from the trap? Now, let me tell you how God rescued me one night from the trap. True story. I was in the Air Force, and I had been out one Friday night, you know, Someplace, like I had no place being, you know. Hey, listen, uh, for those of you who know me, um, you know, I grew up at Glenville, you know, and um, we weren't allowed to go out and clubbing and all that stuff, so I couldn't dance, you know. So I just would go there and watch and see who I can see and try to, you know, try to meet somebody, Willie. Yeah. And so I couldn't get out there and dance because I had no rhythm. <laughs> and so I didn't drink because I was raised, you know, so I didn't drink. I didn't smoke, you know. So I was really out of my element, but I was there on the hunt. You know. <sighs> Struck out, Al. I tried, you know, I saw a couple of ladies, I tried, you know, they are, you know, but I was corny, couldn't dance, you know, you know, but I was on my way home, serious though, I was on my way back to the base, and it was kind of late, <clears throat> and so I was going up Allen Creek, headed back to the Rickenbacker Air Force Base, and uh, I saw this young lady walking, you know, and it was late, it was dark, there was no street lights, you know. So I, uh, I pulled my car over and uh, I said, I said, hey, lady. 
It's too late and too dark for you to be out here by yourself. Where you going? And, and she said, well, she was going home just up the street there. I said, can I give you a ride? And so she hesitated. I said, hey, listen, I understand, but you are safe with me. You know. So she got in, and I took her to her apartment, and I tried to invite myself up, and she says, well, not tonight. She said, but you know what? I'm having a party next Friday. So come to the party, and let's hang out. So, so next Friday, you know, I got one of my best suits. You know, and so I go to her apartment and I ring the buzzer and I say, hey, it's Carl uh, from the Air Force. I gave you a ride. She said, oh, yes, come on up. She pressed the button. I go upstairs and her apartment is full of people. And so she says, hey, listen, the bar's over there. Drinks are free. The food is over there. You can have whatever you want. Just enjoy yourself. And so with my excitement, I walked in the apartment. And, and what I didn't realize that, like, there's music playing, but it's not the music that I'm used to hearing. And so, like, she was from France. She had this French accent, you know, and I was really taken with that. And so... Uh, I just figured this is French music, you know, but it's white folk, black folk, they just all in there just having a good time. And so once, as soon as I got into the middle of the room, I felt this sense of danger. Talking about being trapped, rescued from the trap. And I knew something wasn't right. So the only thing I knew to do was look over in the corner found a seat and I sat in the corner with my back against the wall and I knew I got to get out of here because this ain't right and I started paying more attention to the music and it's like some music I had never heard before all this weird string it's just, it's just it was just weird and so I felt this heavy presence pressing down on me and I knew I had to get out of there, but I was afraid that if I stood up, it felt like everybody in that room was going to jump on me. I'm trapped. And I need rescued. But this, this is before cell phones. I can't call anybody. This is, this is 1978. What's a cell phone? And so the only thing I knew to do was pray. Yes, and I said, Lord, I know that I got no business here. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what kind of presence here, but I know this is not right. Yeah. And so I decided after I sat there, I said, I've got to get it. So I decided that I got to make my move. And if anybody put their hands on me, I can't get them all, but I can get one. <laughs> I can get one. So I stood up, and as I walked, talking about being rescued, y'all, and as I walked across the room, over the crowded room, everybody just spread out and got out of my way. I got to the door. I opened the door, and I ran down the stairs, and I got in my Toyota and sped away as fast as I could because I knew that I was trapped in a pit full of demons. Now, it gets better. So I make it back to the base. I got back to my room, and I could not sleep all night long. And in the morning, my phone rang. And it was my mother. And she says, baby, are you okay? Yeah. And so, Charlie, I'm trying to play it off. I said, yeah, mom, I'm fine. Well, you know, she said, boy, something's not right with you. 
She said, the Lord woke me up last night. And I couldn't go back to sleep, so I spent the night reading scriptures and praying for you. It was the prayer of my mother and reading the word that rescued me from the trap. And so what I want to tell you this morning, just when I needed him the most, he rescued me. Because my mother was at home praying and reading the word for me. There's power in the word of God. So whatever you are trapped in this morning, there's, you can be rescued from the trap. It's in his word. But we've got to spend time in his word. We've got to spend time reading the word of God. We've got to spend time, folk. Not only reading the word of God, but spending time with Jesus Christ. That's the power that we have. Then David says, then David says that all oh, that men, verse 21, will praise the Lord. And let me read it for you. All oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. And so he says, like, why wouldn't you praise such a healer? It's what he's saying. Why wouldn't you praise such a healer? Why wouldn't you praise such a life giver? Why would you not praise God? Oh, give thanks, he says, unto the Lord for... He is good, and his mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. He has redeemed all of us from the trap of the enemy. So there's healing this morning, folk, in the word of God. There's healing this morning, folk, in Jesus Christ. He will rescue you from the trap. And so I just want to pray now and just and get out of your way. So won't you pray with me as I give the appeal? Our Father in heaven, we are so thankful for what you have done for us, the instructions you have given us from your word. And Jesus Christ, who have come in the flesh just to heal and deliver us from the trap. You have rescued us, Jesus, on the cross. You rescued us from the trap. No one needs to be lost because you have made provisions in Jesus Christ. All we have to do is accept it and grab hold to it. Now, there may be someone here this morning, I don't know, who has never given their life over to Jesus Christ. Now is the opportunity for you to do that. So if there's anyone here this morning, or you may be on the internet watching, live stream, if you never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, now is the time to do so. If there's anyone here in the congregation this morning, just raise your hand, just put it up, put it down. God sees you. Is there anyone who want to give their life to Christ this morning? Just raise your hand, put it down, pop it up, put it down. God sees you. He wants to save you more than you want to be saved. Isn't that a concept? He loved you so much that he died on the cross, came to this earth. Can you imagine a God? We just read it in John 1. And in the beginning was the word. And so Jesus at creation, the creator of God, came on this earth just to rescue you from the trap. So if you want to give your heart to, to the Lord this morning, just raise your hand. You put it up and put it down. Somebody's going to pray with you. And then... There's someone here this morning. 
self-included, who need to spend more time in the Word of God. There's no excuse for any of us, folk, not to spend time in the Word of God, especially when God has given us two sources of power, his written word and then Jesus Christ and the word made flesh. There's no reason. And so I'm asking this morning, if you would just recommit yourself this morning, that you'll spend more time in the word of God and that you'll spend more time in the presence of Jesus Christ. That's where the power is. And so if you're committed to do that, I just ask that you stand to your feet. You're committing to spend more time in the word of God and you're committing to know Jesus Christ more intimately. Our Father in heaven, we just thank you, Lord, for blessing us with your presence this morning as we have studied from your word. We are thankful, Father, for what you have done for your psalmist David, but more importantly, we are thankful for what you have done for your people here on this earth. And so this morning, whether someone is here or whether someone is looking somewhere else on live stream, we are committed this morning that we're going to study your word more to get to know you more, more intimately. Father, we want you to speak to us like you spoke to John on that, isle, that lonely eye on the Patmos. Because we know that soon Jesus Christ is soon to come. And he has promised to rescue us from this trap that we're in. We can only make it. We can only make it out of here if we accept Jesus Christ and have a relationship with him. And so more intimately, more intimacy is what we're asking for this morning. May the spirit and the power of God rest, rule, and abide in each and every one of us. And we're thankful for what you have done already for us. In the name of Jesus, amen. <laughs>